Welcome back. We recently found an incredibly simple formula that helps us hunt for our 3n plus 1 loops. To create a loop of length k, we select an operation sequence. We solve for the m that loops back on itself. To get that m, we calculate a beta value, then divide by 2 to the k minus 3 to the x. If m's an integer, then that operation sequence gives us an integer loop. Here's what happens when we consider different values of k up to 20. This column shows the divisibility target, 2 to the k minus 3 to the x, which we want to be small. This column is the number of distinct loops of length k, which we want to be large. Every distinct loop is a shot at that target. If any shot creates a beta that's a multiple of 2 to the k minus 3 to the x, then we have a winner. If betas are random, then this last column shows the chance that we find an integer loop. Seems like we have lots of chances, 40% at, at length 5, 53% here, 8% here. And adding up this column, we'd expect to get about two and a half integer loops. And it seems like we're unlucky, though, because only one bet pays off the first one, where 2 to the k minus 3 to the x is 1. That's the 1, 2, 1 loop. Uh, so let's keep going past k equals 20 and see what happens. If we look at k equals 500, we have a ton of ways to arrange operation sequences of length 500. Actually, 10 to the 139th ways but some shot would have to produce a beta divisible by 2 to the k minus 3 to the x, which is 10 to the 150th. So there's only really a 1 in 100 billion chance of there being an integer loop of length 500 anywhere. And it just seems to get tougher from there. So in this graph, we see longer loop lengths on the x-axis here. On the y-axis, in blue, we have 2 to the k minus 3 to the x, the divisibility target. And also on the y-axis in red, we have the number of distinct loops of length k, the number of shots. So the expected number of integer loops at length k is red over blue. Unfortunately for us, the y-axis is on the log scale. So at length 100, we have a 1 in 10,000 chance of an integer loop. At length 500, like we said, the odds are 1 in 100 billion, and it gets worse. The blue line is pulling away from the red line exponentially fast. How about dips in the blue line? That's where, for whatever crazy reason, 2 to the k minus 3 to the x is smaller than normal. Can we concentrate on those? Well, even so, the ragged blue line still seems to be pulling away fast. So the odds at any particular loop length are not that good. But we have an infinite number of loop lengths to try, so surely we'll get lucky with some of them. Well, maybe not. Think of it this way. Suppose you have a half a chance to win a $100 lottery on Monday a quarter of a chance on Tuesday, an eighth of a chance on Wednesday, etc. Considering just Monday, you would expect to win um, $50 on average. Considering Monday and Tuesday together, you would expect to win around $75 on average. So far, so good. So considering the infinity of future days, would you expect to win an infinite amount of dollars total? Uh, not really. This series converges and you only expect to win a total of $100 throughout all of time. And the same thing happens in the 3n plus 1 problem. If we add up this column of numbers for all loop lengths up to infinity, we get an expectation for the total number of 3n plus 1 loops in existence, which it turns out converges to a finite number. So how do we know that? Well, assume we get k choose x over k shots at the divisibility target, and also assume pessimistically that 2 to the k minus 3 to the x is basically 2 to the k that those two numbers stop being close to each other. Finally, let's pick x to be 63% of k, or really the ceiling of k over log 3. Next, we use Sterling's approximation for k, choose x over k, and after some eighth grade math, we get the expected number of integer loops at length k to be this, e to the negative 0.034k over 1.25k squared k. Now that decreases exponentially with increasing k. If we sum that expression from k equals 2 to infinity, we get a convergence to about 1.6. So we expect 1.6 integer loops total. Now that's pessimistic, like I said, because uh, we're assuming that 2 to the k minus 3 to the x is basically close to 2 to the k. It's a pretty good assumption at large numbers, but not small ones. And remember, going back to this chart, we expect over 2.5 loops total. Either way, if we look all the way down the number line, we really only expect to find a finite handful of loops, no more than you could count on one hand. And we've checked a ton of loops 
uh, lengths empirically, and after that the chances look really astronomically small. So maybe the only integer loop we're going to get is the one we already got. So now it's time to get a little philosophical. First of all, all this talk about probabilities and expectations, hey, come on, there's nothing probabilistic about the 3n plus 1 operations. The thing is we've been assuming that betas are random numbers. They're randomly produced, but actually they're not. Remember last time we looked at this operation sequence and noted that beta 19 isn't a multiple of 5. And that's not just through bad luck, it's the fact that 2 squared plus 2 times 3 plus 3 squared is not a multiple of 5. So maybe there's a subtle interaction between the divisibility target, 2 to the k minus 3 of the x, and the way betas are constructed. That might allow us to prove that there are no loops. Of course, for the 3n minus 1 problem and the 5n plus 1 problem, there are some loops and betas do hit their targets. So maybe they're lucky. Another philosophical point. Even though prob probability here is just a heuristic, maybe we should pay attention. I mean, if we believe in our heart of hearts that the chance of finding a loop is astronomically small, uh, then maybe we should switch from option A, go find a loop, to option B, prove that there are no loops. So let's ponder that in between this episode and the next episode. See you there.